470 grams warm water. No, two cups, two cups, two teaspoons yeast, and two teaspoons sugar. Today I am making crumpets. They are the most amazing thing ever. I, you know, in the United States, uh, well, at least anywhere I've been, I have never found crumpets. I've never had crumpets before. I've been curious about them and, and I'm going to make them today. We're going to do 360 grams of all-purpose flour, which is somewhere around two cups. But I'm following the recipe, so I am, I am weighing it out. Okay, then we go salt. Teaspoon salt, two teaspoons baking powder, first started decluttering, I wanted a list of what I should keep. Okay, if I wanted to embrace minimalism, then how many place settings should I have? How many mixing bowls? How many rubber scrapers? What's too much? What's, what's the right amount? How many pots and pans? Do I need two quart, four quart, five quart? What exactly do I need? And unfortunately, I can't give you an exact list of what you need in your kitchen because we're all different. We all cook different, we all live different, and my list is going to look completely different than your list. I have five people in my home. Two of our older kids live close by and they come for Sunday dinner every week so that I'm cooking for seven. Very often I am cooking for church activities or different things that we have going on. So that's 20 to 30 people. So I need a variety of things and I need some big pots and pans and I need some small pots and pans and I cook a variety of things. I, I bake, I like baking sourdough bread, I bake focaccia, I bake muffins and cakes and I do such a variety of foods from curries to spaghetti. So because of how I live in my home and the habits that I have and the things that I do, I need a lot of kitchen supplies. And that's going to look completely different than a retired couple who are snowbirds and they travel half the year or more in a fifth wheel. But there are a few ways that we can think through our habits and our lifestyle to help us determine exactly what we need in our kitchen. One of the best ways I've found to do this is to, to journal, to just sit down and write down answers to questions because when I write, I, I slow down, I have to articulate, and I think much clearer. If I'm handwriting versus, versus the computer, you can type it on the computer, but, but we process things and think through things differently if we just handwrite. So I like to do that. I like to handwrite my answers and here's the questions. How many meals a day do I cook? How many people do I cook for each meal? Do I entertain? If yes, how often and how many people? What do I normally serve during these times, whether it's entertaining or just our weekly meals? And what types of foods do I find myself cooking most often? Is it prepared? Is it frozen? Is it everything from scratch? Do I bake a lot? Do I make some intense time-consuming meals or dishes that require a lot of different bowls and pans and pots and things like that? Or is it more <laughs> dump it in a crock pot and go type of thing? If you take a little time to write down your honest answers, not the fantasy self answers, but the true, honest, everyday, very much the way I live my life type answers, then you get a better, a better gauge of what exactly you need, what things are useful to you because they support this life that you're living, and what things get in your way because they do not support this life that you're living. If you have four people eating regular meals in your home, then place setting of four to six is sufficient. I prefer having a little bit more so 
if we count our, our older two boys that come over on the weekends, we need regularly seven plates. I have a place setting of eight, um, so that's eight big plates and eight little plates. And so if pe more people come over to our house, then we'll often use a variety of big and little plates. And it's okay, that's, it's enough for us. I am not one of the minimalists that wants one plate per person. It just doesn't seem to work very well for us. And I like to have a little bit of extra. I already have uh, fewer than I did before minimalism in the sense that it forces me to wash the dishes after a meal. I have, it's, I have to do that to be able to eat the next meal on plates. So I feel like for our family, this is a really good amount. And if you entertain frequently, you have to ask yourself what that looks like because some people that might look like a beautifully set table with fine china and cloth and napkins. And for other people, that might mean pizza delivery, paper plates, cans of pop. So even if you entertain and you have people over, ask yourself if you really need the things that you kept for entertaining because if you are someone that just orders pizza then you're not going to need the crystal goblets and punch bowls it's really just about being honest with ourselves and how we live our lives there is no need to keep wine glasses for a bunch of people if everyone you know just drinks coffee and there's no need to keep a place setting of 20 people for a fancy China three course meal if you just have two people eating dinner every night and, and you're content with that. That needs to sit now for 45 minutes. There are a couple ways to figure out exactly what you need. And if that's something that you wanna do, here they are. First, you could box up everything in your kitchen and set it aside in another room and for the next couple of weeks, shop out of those boxes. So when you're cooking and you need supplies, you go in there and you get exactly what you need and you bring it out. At the end of two weeks, you'll know exactly what you use on a regular basis and all the excess will still be in the boxes. Or number two, you could keep a list for the next two weeks and write down exactly what you use. Every time you use it, so if you, if you use your mixing bowl on Monday, you would write down mixing bowl. And then if you use it again on Thursday, you would put a tally mark next to the mixing bowl so you can see exactly how often you use it over a two week time period. At the end of two weeks, you'll have the perfect list for you of exactly what you use. And then you can keep all of those and remove all the extra stuff that doesn't serve you. There's a couple of things that I, that I, put into place that I thought of that have helped me reduce the amount of things that I have in the kitchen. The first, wash the dishes twice a day. I know I say this all the time, but habits, habits, and <laughs> cleaning habits, daily maintenance habits for our home help us so much. They free up time, they free up energy, they like, oh, it's just, it's life changing. I used to have so much in my kitchen that I could go three or four days between washing dishes. I was in the habit of using everything up before I would wash the dishes. This did a couple of things. First, it made it so that when I did do the dishes, it took me a long time. I was like two or three hours to do the dishes because everything was stuck on, it needed to soak, and like, and it was just this huge process to wash everything and put things away, and oh my gosh, what a headache. And second, the kitchen was extremely full of stuff because I had to have enough stuff to carry me that far. Like I had to have extra dishes. I had to have extra pots and pans. I had to have extra mixing, mixing bowls in order to make it three or four days between washing dishes. And now minimalism is a way that I, I self-regulate. It, it helps me maintain my good habits. I'm forced into it. 
I don't have enough dishes to last that long. Like I, when we eat a meal, I have to wash the dishes right away. Like if they don't get washed, then we're, we're washing them before we eat the next meal. So it has to be done. But I found that I'm much happier when the dishes are done. If I see a sink full of dirty dishes, it just fills me with dread. It just like drains, <laughs> drains all the joy out of me. Just, ugh, that again. But uh, it's so much faster to do the dishes right when they're freshly dirty. If they don't sit and they don't have time to have the food cake on and dry on, it doesn't actually take very long to wash the dishes and then they're done. You don't have to think about it anymore. It's, gosh, that's such a relief. But I got rid of so much in my kitchen that I was forced to have that habit. I was forced to do the dishes after every meal. And that keeps my kitchen looking really nice all the time. It's useful for me whenever I'm ready to go and cook in it. And multi-purpose is better than single purpose. I had a lot of things. I had a lot of different gadgets and I, what I found is that it's easier to have a high quality chef's knife that's sharp and cuts well and works well than to have a pineapple cutter, an apple corer, a slicer, peeler, an onion chopper, an egg slicer, all those different things. If I learn how to use this one tool of a chef's knife, then I can get rid of all those other things because I don't need a gadget to make my life easier. I just have the one. And there are so many single use items in our kitchen that disguise themselves as useful. But each item that we have needs a place to belong. And if we have to spend a lot of time digging through our utensils to find the one that we want and the one that we use on a daily basis, the time we save using the supply that took us 10 minutes to find, it just kind of invalidates the reason for keeping it. It invalidates its usefulness. <laughs> you need out. Okay. More isn't always better. Sometimes it's just more. I had a whole set of pots and pans when I started out and I thought that was good. I needed a variety, I needed different sizes. But what I found was that I used two quart and a five quart all the time. Like that's what I did my cooking with. And so what would happen is I would open the cupboard and I would pull out all the pots and pans, get the one that I wanted, put the others back in and then take the one that I wanted to the stove. And I would do that when I would get them out and I would do it again when I would put them away. And it was just so much more work of, of shuffling things around just so I could have this variety. And of course, I thought I would miss them when they were gone. Like, well, if I got rid of all of those things, then, you know, what would happen when I actually needed that size? But because I just used the two quart and the five quart all the time, that's all I needed, what happened was it made my life easier. It meant that I could just reach in, grab the one that I want without having to move anything else. They're all just right there, easy to access, easy to put away again. Life is easier. So much extra time and energy was saved just by getting rid of the extra pots and pans. I am so excited about this. <laughs> nice and hot, fresh. The butter melts down into the crevices. Oh, raspberry jam. Mmm. <laughs> That's so good. It is worth 
all the effort, time, everything.